Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to Rogue System. In today's video I'm going to demonstrate the use of the flux drive, which is the drive that you'll use to transit from one object within your solar system to another. We're currently in orbit around the moon and we're going to make our way to another local moon, probably over there. Uh, so without further ado I will demonstrate how this is done and uh, just so you're aware this will ape the content that you will find in tutorial video 7 in the game itself and uh, this is recorded in version 0.1, 0.9, 0.21, 0 0.15 which is update 3. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to power up our flux drive. Uh, so if we look at the, the main engine system panel here we want to click flux enable we want to enable the accumulator auto balance mode. Uh, we want to make sure our throttle is at zero. Mine was actually advanced a little bit there. So throttle at zero, engage the throttle lock so that we don't inadvertently engage the throttle at any point, and then we press accumulator charge. You'll see that the accumulator charge bar will slowly increase, but that's gonna take a little bit of time. So we're gonna leave that alone just now. And in the meantime, set up our displays and navigation systems. So one of the first things I'm going to do with the displays Oops, is I'm going to go to displays, go to viewport management, sorry, viewport monitor system, and engage navigation mode. This will give me all of my usual symbology that I need to be able to properly navigate the ship. Next, we're going to go to navigation mode, and if I zoom in on the HMD a little bit, you'll see that we are currently in orbit um, around, well, somewhere around planet 23.3. If I select the planet and choose Zoom Selected, we then find that actually I'm in orbit around its first moon, 23.3.1. Uh, for today's mission, I think it would be quite fun for us to transit to point 0.3, which is this moon over here. So, with the moon selected, all we have to do is click Destination Set, and that's going to give us all of our basic information, like distance and so on. Before proceeding, I'm going to take a little look and see exactly where in the sky that moon is. Now, I think it's the one off to the right here. Nope, apparently it's not. Right, I'll continue turning. Our destination marker, ah, right, actually, it's, it's pointing us all the way over here. That's fine. Now, my only concern is uh, that's retrograde. Uh, to our currently orbited body. If I was to burn towards that, I might get away with it at this altitude, but I'm not going to risk it. I don't really want the video to end in disaster. So, with that in mind, we're going to select a different moon, uh, because you know, what will happen, of course, is as we burn retrograde, our relative velocity to this moon will drop dramatically. That will cause us to immediately start plummeting. <laughs> and that's not really something that I want. So let's try point two, it's even closer. So I'm gonna clear destination, destination set. That's a much shorter distance actually. And if we now rotate to the left, we should find that we're now locked onto this moon, the first one that I thought in the first place. Now this is actually also not particularly recommended. You generally want to be burning prograde, which in our case would be off to the left. Um, but at this altitude and at that distance, I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm gonna proceed with that. Now, if we look down at our flux drive, we'll see it's now fully charged. So I'm gonna proceed with actually calculating the burn. If we click transfer panel, it's gonna bring up our burn calculator. Now there are only two pieces of information that we need to feed into this. The drive that we'd like to use, uh, I'm just gonna use the flux drive because, well, it's just far quicker. And I'm gonna choose the throttle level that I would like to burn at. 100% is my choice because it's just far easier than anything else. 100% throttle. And uh, what I'm going to do before I commit that is I'm actually gonna advance my main engine system throttle to 100%. Because the throttle lock is engaged, nothing will happen yet. And I'm then going to hit commit. And you can see it gives us our, our duration of burn at only about half an hour. So this, this is going to be quite a quick one. Clicking commit. And if I zoom out now, we will now get the indication on the screen saying acceleration burn is initiated. And we're going to get a little green AMAT cross. You'll see that just here. Now, just to make our lives easier, we can use the autopilot to help us with the burn. So if I go to autopilot, if I set my attitude reference to target, and if I set the mode to normal, when I click Attitude Align Enable, it's going to point me at that green cross and it's going to maintain us pointing in the correct direction the whole time. This saves us having to do any manual manoeuvring and introducing any errors. So, uh, we're now pointed at the green cross. The next thing for us to do is simply click the throttle lock 
and our burn will begin. And there you go, you'll see that our uh, velocity and apoapsis are climbing. Very quickly, the apoapsis should actually switch to saying that we're escaping. Uh, now, the only thing for us to worry about just now is that our periapsis is dropping. It's probably going to reach the point at which it will say collision, but uh, I'm fairly hopeful that once we get our velocity up a bit, there we go, impact warning, uh, once we get our velocity up a bit, uh, we will be out of that particular danger. I think we have just enough altitude to get away with this. There we go. So we now have an apoapsis of escaping and a periapsis of impact warning. This means we, you, if you imagine our orbit as an ellipse, it's it's become very, very skinny, and one end of it is inside the centre of the moon behind us, which I can't see right now, uh, and the, the other end of it is reaching out towards this moon in front of us. Uh, now, hopefully we're able to break orbit before anything unfortunate happens to us. And I think that should probably happen at around about four kilometers a second, I think, if I watch my relative velocity. We should get away with it at that point. You can see that our altitude is still climbing, so we're not in any particular danger of dashing ourselves against the moon just yet. Uh, now, once you've established full throttle, you know, once the flux drive is showing the thrust generated at full, you would normally then enter sleep. The only reason I'm not going to do that right now is because I want to make sure that I actually successfully break orbit uh, rather than smash into the surface. Uh, now the, the sleep is uh, engaged by hitting the U key by default and at the present time for testing purposes that's limited to one hour. Uh, now you probably won't sleep for the full hour, in fact in our case we definitely won't uh, because you will come out of sleep automatically in the event you trigger one of the alarms. Now, one of the alarms is at the midpoint of your burn. Uh, it tells you to, at that point, throttle down. You'll then get another alarm telling you to engage reverse thrust, and then the final alarm will occur once you're at the destination. Mm, I still have impact warning. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it, fire arc, you can do it. I'll wait just a bit longer to make sure that this doesn't go terribly wrong. Here, G forces acting on the ship. Well, our altitude is increasing, so there shouldn't be anything particularly to worry about. Well, let's take a little risk. Let's hit the Yuki. It'll start counting down the minutes once we're in sleep. And there we go. Uh, we got an alarm. Prepare for breaking burn. Okay, so immediately we turn our MES throttle to zero and wait for the thrust generated to decrease. We now see that we have apoapsis at escaping and a periapsis that is at a nice safe altitude, so nothing horrible is going to happen. Okay, so our throttle, thrust generated, sorry, is all the way down. Uh, I'm gonna press my MES reverse key just in preparation for that breaking burn, and I'm gonna sleep again until it tells me that I should do it. Shouldn't be very long. Oh, there we go, about <laughs> a few minutes. Commence deceleration burn. So, now I'm gonna increase my MES throttle to full. We're now burning with the reverser turned on, as you can see, and that's going to start decelerating us. Okay, our thrust generated is back at full. You always want to make sure that the thrust generated has reached the throttle setting that you're going to use before you hit sleep, because the thrust doesn't increase while you're in sleep. So if I hit the U key again now, we're now just waiting for the alarm telling us we've reached our destination which we have, well, actually, approaching destination. So what I'm going to do at this point is um, I'm actually going to keep my, my reverse thrust on and wait until we get there because um, velocity is kind of high, and for the type of orbital injection that I do, I quite like to have a lower relative velocity. So let's just sleep again right now and see what happens. A few more minutes, and we now get arrived at destination. So I'm going to close my throttle entirely and wait for the thrust generated to reach zero. Oh, there we go. You can see it's now it's now decided that we're at our destination. So the symbology on the screen has disappeared. No green cross anymore, and the, the messages that were appearing at the bottom of the VMS are now gone. My thrust generated has now reached zero. I'm going to turn off the reverser at this point. Uh, you can see that 
we're, we're in the vicinity of this moon, but we have not established an orbit. Our apoapsis is escaping and our periapsis is impact warning. And uh, also worryingly, our prograde marker is pointing right at the center of the moon. That's not something we want. So let's see what we can do about this situation. Our attitude align mode disengaged because um, the symbology had disappeared. And what it does automatically is it pops us into orbital reference. So with orbital reference on, we can then switch to radial in and align, but that should point us approximately 90 degrees to the left of our target. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn 90 degrees to our target in order to shift our uh, periapsis off of the surface. Now, th there are actually three different ways of injecting yourself into orbit. There's this method that I'm going to show you. You can actually also bring yourself to a complete stop by burning retrograde. It, well, I say relative stop in or you know, with regards to the body. Uh, and then you can rotate 90 degrees and burn. Or the last way that you can do it is you can actually remain facing directly at the moon and simply use your left or right lateral thrusters in order to shift your prograde off the surface. Although that's only going to work if your relative velocity is low and the body that you're going to orbit is fairly small. So we're going to go for this particular method. I'm going to advance my MES throttle to half um, because it takes a little bit of time for the, the engine to respond and I don't want to uh, build up too much velocity before I notice what I'm doing. So the autopilot will hold us pointing at radial in while we burn and we're just going to watch our apoapsis and periapsis values. The periapsis should rise out of impact warning fairly shortly. The whole time our altitude is counting down so we want to get this done fairly quickly. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Periapsis is claiming. Right. I'm going to aim for a periapsis of about 600 kilometers just now. And then I'm going to close the throttle. Right. Closing the throttle now. And let that thrust generated come down. So we're now no longer in danger of dashing ourselves against the surface. That's good news. We're now going to point ourselves prograde and align. Oops. Align with that. Because for our next trick, we're going to allow ourselves to travel towards periapsis and then we're going to burn retrograde. Now when you're at periapsis and you burn retrograde, what that will do is it will lower your apoapsis. Whatever point in an orbit you're at, when you burn, you're affecting the other side of the orbit. So here we go. Altitude is dropping, eventually we will reach our periapsis and uh, we will then do our retrograde burn. Now I'm wondering if we would get away with sleeping just now. Somehow I don't think so. So what I'll do, I'll, I will cut to the point at which I'm at periapsis and I'll see you guys there. Okay, and now we're approaching periapsis. Uh, as you can see the, the moon is starting to uh, be illuminated by the sun in a very pretty fashion. Uh, we're getting quite close to our periapsis now. We're sitting at about a thousand kilometers uh, with our periapsis being at about 600 and something. So at this point I'm going to begin a retrograde burn. Now we're, we're pointing prograde so I'll just turn on the MES reverser and I'm going to advance my throttle to 50% and at that stage we should see our orbital velocity starts to drop, which it is. Uh, now our periapsis will drop a bit, but uh, obviously we need to keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't drop too much. If I was closer to the periapsis, we would have less of an effect on it. Uh, but um, I'm just worried about my accuracy here. I don't, uh, I don't want to blast past it. So I am burning probably a little bit early. Uh, our periapsis will drop, but as long as we get the apoapsis, well, there we go, to an actual figure, then that is an orbit established. It's a bit eccentric, but it's a, a perfectly good orbit. Uh, I'm going to let that drop a bit more and I'm going to kill the thrust. It'll take a little bit of time to make its way down. I could have probably gotten that even a bit closer, but uh, nonetheless, 
that's perfectly good. I'm turning off my reverse, I'm turning back on the throttle lock so I don't inadvertently do something bad. And we now have uh, an orbit established of seven, well, more like 18,000 kilometers by five, well, almost 600 kilometers. That, my friends, is an orbit. We have transitioned from one moon to another and we've now established orbit. I could spend some time circularizing that but really the, you know for our purposes there's no point. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that and now understand how to use the flux drive and I'll see you next time.